dude, am I tripping? That's a question I find myself asking more often than not these days. Am I tripping? Sometimes I look over and say, am I alive? You know, like, did something happen? Did I die and wake up in some weird reality? Like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> I think I'm tripping. I think I've got an answer. And I think it may make sense to a lot of you. And I've been really trying to, you know, find a way to present this in, in a manner in which it might be received by, you know, a larger number of people. You know, I hold back a lot on what I think and believe and, and some of the things that I would really like to share with you guys. And I'm going to try to do that less. I'm going to try to give you a little bit more. And so what I want you to do right now is envision yourself or envision others as an ear of corn, okay? And each, you know, like if you would look at an ear of corn before the, the kernels are, have appeared on it, each little spot is a place for a seed, which is that kernel. And when that, cur that ear of corn is full of kernels, each kernel is just bursting with its own individuality, its own life, right? Each kernel could become something else entirely. It could become, you know, individual kernels of corn or popcorn, you know. It can be uh, so much more than what it is. But if that, if that ear of corn were to rot, the individual kernels of corn would become filled with a chemical that would indeed make you trip. Like LSD. That's what it's made from. So let's just think about it in those metaphysical terms, you know. And, you know, if this ear of corn is with filled with rotting seeds, you know, it's literally affecting your ability to see reality for what it really is. So my thoughts are, we are like an ear of corn. And every dark energy that exists that binds itself to us, binds itself to our seeds, starts to rot away at the entire ear of corn, at the core of the piece of corn, which is us. And so we lie underneath, the core of ourselves lie underneath all of these seeds that have filled the uh, stalk of corn. And... You know, when it comes to dark energies, that can manifest in a million different ways for you guys may resonate with that in, you know, a bunch of different ways. Some of you may see it as aliens. Some may of you may see it as demons. Some of you may see it as just simply dark energies. You know, there's, you know, all sorts of ideas and concepts out there. But the bottom line is we all know that there's an energy that we don't like that gets a hold of us. And sometimes we just do things and, you know, it may not always make sense. Or we have justified and in, in, in things, you know, we justify things and, and make them fit. And again, I feel like that's that dark energy. So when I look into my, you know, into, the, into my mind, into my mind's eye, into my psyche, into the spirit realm, and I look for those dark energies don't have to look very far they're everywhere they're absolutely everywhere it is literally in my mind like a sea of dark energy desolate and desperate type energy that surrounds as far as the eye can see and it's not just one layer but layer upon layer upon layer upon layer and I look into the corners of the world and I look into the areas of the world and in places where I see they're just thick with them. These energies are ready to, to go. They're ready to become a part of you. They're ready to be a part of your life. And they are every day. And no matter how wonderful we may think we are, those energies attach us, attach themselves to us in so many ways. And, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, traditions and beliefs with regard to this very subject matter and um, a lot of those beliefs stem from the idea that we create openings in ourselves somehow you know some people say it's with markings on the skin you know permanent markings and um, other things that we do and we say and invite with our words and I believe that you know I do and uh, you know, it's, it's everything that we do in, in all of our actions, in all of our words, in all of our interactions, those energies are there. 
Now, how do we control this? It's really, it's fundamental. It's elementary, you know, um, but it may not be easy, you know, elementary, but not easy, you know, and that is in controlling that energy within yourself, because honestly, the only thing that you have control over in this world is what you do say your actions, you know, your thoughts, your actions and everything that's coming from you. That's all you really have control over, but your contribution to the whole is what you offer and when you can control the energies that are affecting you, you're controlling the energies that are being set out on the world because when they're affecting you, they're affecting everything around you. Am I right? So we go back to the basics and say, I need to recognize and find those dark energies in my life and you'll see them and when they creep up, you know, it may be a thought, you know, for me, I've got a couple of really dark thoughts that open me up to a whole lot of dark energy, that energy that will just like put you down, you know, put you on the couch crying or something, you know, um, it's, it's just a small little opening in your psyche. Some people, some traditions believe that you go into a bar and they're just waiting there. And when you start to intoxicate yourself, you become vulnerable to these things. And then if you watch how things go when people get drunk and everything, there is like this wild sort of, um, I don't know, abandoned going on there. Like it's crazy. Um, uh, but yeah, I do think that, uh, you know, there are millions and trillions of ways that we become susceptible. All right. And I think that we've become kind of victim to this, whatever's happening because we're not aware of whatever's happening and you haven't been taught about what is happening. So how could you know what to do and how to manage it? So really what I'm thinking is, you know, we need to, first of all, identify what that dark energy is. And like I said, it can be tricky. It can sneak into your psyche. It can just be something so inconspicuous. You know what I'm saying? But identify them. Number one. Number two, when you see it, be like, okay, I've identified it. I know what that is. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to give into it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to interact with it. That is one step, right? And keeping it from coming back in, right? And then we don't do things to make ourselves susceptible to those energies. Avoid doing things that put you at a disadvantage or make you vulnerable in some way. That is, a, you know, a big thing. And, you know, for those of you who watch my tarot, um, the devil card is like really the topic we're having right now. This is the, the devil, you know, and I talk about that as like you decide what that is because it could be anything in your life, you know, that devil point to it, find it and, and then single it out and say, Whoop, we're not going to have any more interaction, you know, and kind of close it down and allow for your energy to be clear of that stuff. Second thing that I was thinking, well, if indeed, you know, and of course, everything that I, I'm throwing at you is theory. I'm not saying it's fact because there's nothing to prove it, but you know, it's some fun thing to think about. Um, if indeed they, these energies can attach themselves to you and can kind of take over, maybe even put you to sleep, maybe make somebody unaware of what's going on or, um, I, I can't help but think about Billy Milligan when it comes to these situations. And for those of you who are interested in this topic, look at Billy Milligan. This is a person that, you know, had a very, very, um, low IQ. It was somebody with the, um, like the personal development of maybe like an eight year old or something like that. And he had crazy knowledge, knowledge that no, there's just no way he could have had. He knew ancient Sanskrit. He could play, you know, concert piano. Um, he knew several different languages. I mean, there were just so many things about him that was incredible that you could not explain with a personality disorder. You know, it seems as if several different energies have attached themselves to him. He's no longer with us, but they had attached themselves to him and, you know, really just ran amok. And, you know, according to Billy, he was put asleep during that time. He was unaware of what was going on entirely, you know? And yes, they did merge his personalities. And I think he went on to live a decent life after that. But the point is, I do think that there is something going on with that, you guys. And so, uh, be mindful, watchful. And the other part I was trying to get to, I'm sorry, I get a little, I'm just flying off the hip with these videos. I don't really, uh, think about what I'm going to say. I just 
can't say it. So uh, the other thing I was going to say is if indeed you are susceptible to having dark energies attach themselves to you and you are maybe even like an energy center, that's a very popular, you know, kind of um, thought. But uh, let's say that you are, you know, this energy center with all of these seeds, you know, that could be filled with whatever, you know. What if we just have been unaware for so long of our ability to manage this? And maybe it is that we need to pick and choose, you know? And I do think that there's a balance in the universe of good and bad, you know? And I don't think we're ever going to want or have a world where it's all good or it's all bad because I just think that there is a natural balance in things that go, you know, even down to the quantum level, you know? So there is a balance in this universe. So fear not that the, the, the darkness will take over because, yeah, it can swing out of balance, but it will swing back into balance as well. And I think that we can kind of usher that in and knowing that we can pick and choose what it is that we want to resonate with, what we want to connect with. And um, I really, you know, if you want to get into like bringing something into the, the, the physical world, you know, that happens, you know, in some ways in like art, you know, and in creation of something and bringing a thought from, you know, the ethereal into the physical, right? It comes in the form of like martial arts, for example. This is, you know, becoming familiar with a certain energy there, an energy which I'm very familiar with because I, I spent many years in judo with my kids and I did some myself. So yeah, I'm very familiar with that energy. I know what we're talking about. And you know, this is something you can connect with on the physical plane. And for those energies that you want to connect with, but you feel like I don't have a connection to that, then learn about it, become connected with that energy, because those are the things that you want to plug in, you know, have a choice about it, have a choice about what you attach and allow to be attached to you. All right. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments section below. I wish you all the absolute best. Take care.